So, um, sorry I can't make it, I couldn't make it there. Um, I've been very busy um, with a fellowship here in Estonia. Uh, but I wanted to uh, briefly kind of go over uh, some stuff about uh, some of the research that I've been doing on Wikipedia and education. This is part of kind of 10 years of experience, which to some of you is nothing. Uh, you know, I've a little bit ex uh, involved in Wikipedia for, you know, uh, since, since its inception. But um, I've been uh, teaching with, uh, editing, and researching Wikipedia for, I want to say 11, uh, probably going on 12 years now. And uh, recently, I've, I've, and more recently, I've released a whole lot of different um, uh, publications. Uh, and, you know, for me, as I actually was discussing with Evo uh, recently, there's kind of two sides to this. One is kind of the academic side, to, so that the academics can kind of understand it from an academic side. And the other side is kind of a more practical application. And, you know, I'm, I will always be an academic uh, as well as a, a Wikipedian. So uh, forgive me if it gets a little academic, but uh, I think that what I am trying to present to you here is um, kind of a practical way of kind of seeing how we can use Wikipedia to help with information literacy within, within education. And I know that uh, it, it's done a little bit different um, out here than it is in, uh, in the United States sometimes, but I think we can still take some, uh, some of those takeaways. So uh, first of all, uh, as, as it should be, uh, my slides are open. If you want to follow along, you can go to bit.ly forward slash wiki info lit -E -E. And the present, this presentation is gonna really cover uh, an open access article on a, uh, a social media and society that's called Wikipedia as Open Educational Practice, Experiential Learning, Critical Information Literacy, and Social Justice, written by myself and Matthew Vetter. Um, this is, this is uh, I will provide the link to that and our new book uh, at the end of this, um, but I also think it's, in, uh, it's on Wiki. So why do we use Wikipedia in the classroom? Uh, we teach it because everyone uses it, and as you are well aware, almost no one understands it outside of the community, and, and, and really even only a small fraction of the community uh, participates on, on, you know, a lot of different levels. And the, but the real reason is, and I don't know if this joke uh, 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 works here in, in Europe as well as it does in the United States, but I like to say that abstinence only with key education doesn't work. And what I mean there is kind of like twofold. I mean, not only does telling people not to use Wikipedia not work because they're using it, but I also mean this in the way that when you teach people not to use Wikipedia and then they use it, then they don't value the information as they should, which means they're not critically engaging with it, which means they're not benefit, benefiting from it. So what I like to call, uh, what I, what I kind of like bring this around, this is the academic term here, because I call this experiential epistemology when we teach Wikipedia, which is just really that they're learning information literacy through doing their assignment, through learning how to edit Wikipedia, through learning how to engage with Wikipedia, they are learning uh, epistemological foundations and literacy, information literacy. Um, there are a lot of ways to teach Wikipedia, but uh, Really, the, the, the longer term assignment is the one that uh, we've studied the most. It's where people go through uh, a step-by-step -step of learning to evaluate a Wikipedia article. They pick an article or topic or assign one. They do the research, they annotate and summarize that research, they draft the article, and then they, they participate in a long peer review, right? So this is, everybody knows, you know, this is the kind of, you know, a basic step-by-step, -step, but this is also how you know, all, almost all uh, academic papers for, 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 for university students are written. The problem is those papers just go into the trash. And these papers, you know, these, these assignments end up being, you know, used by different people, hopefully. Or they end up uh, uh, being able to inspire students a little bit more to do more work on them. And one of the things that I have my students do specifically and, and is often recommended is that it's, instead of giving them a 10 page, you know, paper or like, you know, 2,500 word paper per assignment at the end of the semester, instead what they're expected to do is contribute just a small amount to Wikipedia, maybe 250 
words. Because by the time that they write those 250 words, the 250 to 500 words, they're going to rewrite them over and over and over again. Because what fails with these types of assignments is when students just go at it like they do a regular assignment. This is the key to a Wikipedia assignment, of course. As you all know, if you, as you, uh, you know, edit Wikipedia for, for years, you can't just write something just willy-nilly, like uh, it is if, as if you were writing a, a, you know, a paper for your English literature class. You can't just type it out and then put it out there because it's usually filled with garbage it's not cited correctly, or it's not uh, written in from a neutral point of view. So learning these skills actually takes an enormous amount of time, and it's something that's teaching these students this, this thing I call them uh, uh, exper uh, experiential epistemology. So a lot of the uh, information that I'm going to present to you here uh, came from uh, uh, years ago now. God, this is like six years ago. Uh, I did this long, this big uh, student learn uh, learning outcome study uh, with the Wiki uh, with the Wiki Education Foundation um, out in California, uh, in the United States, and I uh, I surveyed 1,627 students, uh, three different surveys over across the semester. Uh, 96 instructors were surveyed. I did 13 class focus groups with over 200 participants, and every single bit of my um, data. <laughs> as well as my methodology I have, uh, is published open access. You can, you can see the CSVs, you can see the code books, you can see every single bit of it. I, I, this is, I try to do this uh, research in a very radically open way because I want people to engage with it, right? I don't know if I'm right, but I do know that I think that I've got a good idea at it, and, I've got, and I'm pretty, pretty you know, experienced at, 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 um, at surveying and, and talking to students. So take the data, see if you can do more with it, whatever. Um, it's at uh, bit.ly slash SLO Wikipedia. So you can go see this. This entire research report is out there. Um, uh, it was published under uh, uh, you know, CC by SA. So major findings from the, the, the survey and the study was uh, you know, basically that students spent more time on their assignments. They were happier with their work. They have more perceived value for, for skills. Like they actually thought that this class, that working with Wikipedia was a better experience because a lot of these assignments, they look at them and go, why are we doing this? Which is really important because that adds to, um, that adds to something that, uh, that uh, can uh, increase self-efficacy, which is uh, how students imagine that they can be, right? So it's the idea that they have a belief that they can succeed. And this is one of the leading things that is a, a key indicator for success for students, uh, especially first generation students who often get left behind, right? So these are the students that we really want to reach, that we want to uh, help, because these are the students that uh, a college education will significantly improve uh, their uh, lifestyle, right? And their, their ability to support their families. So, and of course, they have a huge shifting perceptions of Wikipedia and knowledge production in general, which is both about information literacy, but also just students really approach Wikipedia far differently afterwards. So, uh, and so uh, uh, that study was done back in 2016, and we published some stuff out of that, and then we published a few things over the years with it. But we had been talking about for a while this uh, thing from the, uh, the Association of College uh, research libraries framework for information literacy in higher education, and I kind of I started out in that way to begin um, linking these ideas together. But it took us a few years before, because well, welcome to academics. It took us a few years before I could publish something that really connected these ideas. And what I like about the ACRL's framework for information literacy in higher education is that. Uh, and, and, and it's not just about higher education, but that's what they focus on, right, of course. But these are frameworks that are more descriptive rather than prescriptive about information literacy, right? And they have these five different frames. Authority is constructed and contextual. Information creation is a process. Information has value. Research is inquiry. And scholarship is strategic exploration. So those different frames help to kind of describe what a, what information literacy should be like, right? 
the understanding of each of these and how uh, we engage with that. So this, is, this becomes a framework then for analyzing the Wikipedia assignment. So I've got, uh, in the, uh, again, you can look at the article, it goes through it in much higher detail because it's like 30 pages long, and this, you know, is going to be, you know, 20 minutes long. Uh, so uh, the first frame uh, is that uh, learners come to respect the experience of the expertise that authority represents while remaining skeptical of systems that have elevated that authority. And also that they develop their own authoritative voices in a particular area and recognize the responsibilities this entails. So uh, going through the student feedback as well as you know uh, a lot of experience within this, you can see that the Wikipedia assignment and editing Wikipedia directly speaks to this. They understand this idea that there's this huge discussion that gets reviewed by peers and other people, and uh, that they realize they can't just cut and paste things, right? They understand that there's a, a lot more work that goes into it, and they understand the, the how it comes together from a variety of different kind of sources. Um, so the next uh, 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 framework, information is a cro uh, process that they, uh, that says, you know, experts, and they, they talk about this a lot throughout the framework, like experts versus novices, right? And they say, uh, experts look at the underlying process of creation as well as the final product to critically evaluate usefulness. And novices begin to recognize significance of the creation process, leading them to increasingly sophisticated choices when matching information products with information needs. And I mean, I, I think that many of you who've been editing Wikipedia for a while can already kind of see how this matches up with how one you know, creates a Wikipedia article. But students aren't there yet but they're fascinated here. Uh, one of the quotes they said, before Wikipedia, we were never able to see the whole process from start to finish. We were only able to see the finished product. The ink on the pages that had been printed only after several edits and, and, and revisions. I like how they use the term ink because they, they, see, the Wikipedia, they see Wikipedia and they look at it and they, they saw it as something that was printed, right? As a you know, print screen kind of thing. They, don't, they didn't see it as something that was uh, malleable or editable or even something that was ever edited. Uh, so now they're, they're recognizing this process, this process of information creation. Uh, the, the next frame, the information has value, is that this idea that information possesses several different dimensions of value. So uh, this is this, this is, uh, comes out in a, a variety of ways, but because like information can be a means of education or to influence or negotiating and understanding the world, one of the biggest things that they, they, they learn is how information should be used and what kind of value it has within Wikipedia. First of all, uh, particularly how to not use it as a means to influence, of course. But they also recognize the value of what's there and what's not. Uh, and they said, uh, uh, Wikipedia is a history of the knowledge of the events that have been documented and historicized in the world. And, uh, and, and they, they recognize that there's a process of trying to diversify that information, right? This idea that it's not random, the information that's mis missing from Wikipedia comes from their understanding of seeing that Wikipedians, uh, you know, despite the best efforts, like there's only so many things that have secondary sources, but also to not, not everybody knows what to, what to write about, right? It's the whole idea of that there are known unknowns and there are unknown unknowns. And if you don't know what you don't know, then it's kind of hard to write about it. The next framework, uh, research is inquiry, uh, asks, them to recognize the collaborative effort within a discipline to extend the knowledge of that field, as well as it includes points of disagreement or debate and dialogue work to deepen the conversation around knowledge. Now, these students are usually not getting into uh, ARPCOM uh, situations, right? So like, uh, uh, they're, 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 they're not going uh, into that type of uh, points of disagreement, but they are uh, trying to represent, right, the arguments that are out there within uh, within uh, uh, the whatever the case is for that knowledge, and of course that that's something that rather than trying to represent one side, they now have to look at the 
the uh, litany of information that's out and be able to learn how to balance that within kind of a uh, within the idea of NPOB. Uh, student feedback here is this, you know, obviously it's a synthesis. Of course, this is against WP synth, but that's not what they mean. They don't mean it's a synthesis as a new synthesis. They mean it's a it's taking different pieces, right? So uh, this is the, the problem with the English language sometimes is that uh, the, the term synthesis can mean bad things to Wikipedians, but not <laughs> to students who don't know all the, uh, the ways in which we uh, use words. But they obviously don't mean that they're trying to create new knowledge here, right, through that type of synthesis. <laughs> what they mean is that it is uh, taking all the different knowledge that's out there and being able to put it into one document together. So this is this thing that most students, when they come in, they're not quite as, they don't know how this works. They don't see that, they see Wikipedia as a singular document and not a collection of all the different things and that is written in a way to represent that knowledge. So, and uh, then they say later, they say, your obligation is to think of yourself as an encyclopedia rather than as, in, uh, as and I think they mean as, the, as part of the encyclopedia, rather than as an individual. State scientifically and sociologically backed up fact that might prove one viewpoint or person viewpoint the other, but like, they're not talking about like trying to argue, but instead stating these, these, uh, this information. Now, they still use the term facts, of course, here, but what, of course, we all know they mean uh, they have their sign neutral representation of reliable information, right? So it's verifiable uh, representation, which definitely would meet this idea of research and inquiry. Uh, scholarship, uh, the last two here, uh, really, I don't need a bunch of uh, quotes because I think they, they make a lot of sense just in context uh, for you. But scholarship has conversations that experts understand that a given issue may be characterized by several, several competing perspectives. Now, uh, many students would think that, you know, if you're going to represent things, they're taught a lot of argumentation rather than representing and understanding competing perspectives, which is how information is presented within, uh, under, you know, NPOB. Uh, information users and creators come together and negotiate meaning. So when they're reading these things, they understand what this, that all of these different ideas are out there and they must be represented neutral. This idea of de developing familiarity with the sources of evidence, methods, and modes of discourse uh, can assist learners to uh, enter the conversation. And really, the more that you're doing this kind of research, you're going to uh, be familiarize yourself with the larger conversation, not just uh, what it, the first thing that comes up on a Google search. And then the final uh, framework, uh, searching the strategic exploration really kind of hits it home for me because this has to do with, uh, it, it says identifies both possible relevant sources as well as the means to access those sources. And uh, we deal with this a lot where, um, where things are behind a paywall and uh, people don't even have access to find them. So, you know, one of the things with uh, bringing students in is that they do have access to things behind a paywall. And once we find those, and once people access them, then we can find other ways to, you know, to for everyone else to get them. You know, there's a, a, a lot of projects, there's projects out there to do that. But learning these, uh, having access within a university or somewhere else that has these uh, better library accesses really can, um, it can help uh, uh, build a, uh, a broader set of uh, resources. <clears throat> so, and, and finally, really one of the biggest things that I'm, I'm uh, 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 that's really kind of uh, 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 driven my kind of, uh, uh, my involvement as well as my passion for this is that uh, I really see Wikipedia, and the pedagogy, the Wikipedia as pedagogy, as well as Wikipedia, ped, Wiki, like using Wikipedia within my pedagogy, is a type of social justice. Because one, it helps teach information literacy, which we know is incredibly difficult right now, uh, and is uh, the lack of it is is, is uh, it's really kind of a, a fueling a lot of issues around uh, around some very significant. Uh, 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 you know, fake news issues, but it, it also inspires students, which 
if students are inspired in, in ways to do their work, they're often, they're, they're very, especially students of, of first generation students. We have uh, data just came back recently that 50% uh, of, uh, at least student, uh, at my university, 50% of the uh, students that I, that I have are not only in college full time, but they are also uh, supporting their family financially. Whether it's their, you know, they're already married or their parents or their grandparents. So people have a lot of competing things that are going on. And you know what, we all get burnt out. So like we need, we need to have things that feel more exciting and feel more connected to the real world. And of course, uh, uh, engaging students is always going to increase editorship diversity uh, because uh, students are far more diverse than the average Wikipedian. Uh, and it also is going to increase information diversity because uh, the more topics that we have uh, that are being taught, that are being engaged in, in, in classrooms with Wikipedia, the, it's going to be, uh, it's always going to be able to uh, uh, diversify the information on Wikipedia. Uh, we're, we're never going to run out because hopefully the people who will be leading these will be the experts in the field. That's, that's the best way to come at this. So um, really, uh, thank you. That, that's, that's all I really have. Um, I don't know what the format is here, if, you, if we want to have any discussion now or, or later. But I also have, uh, here's a, a, a link again to the slides. Um, the link uh, to the article is below. Uh, the, next to my name is my, uh, you know, my, use, my Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia uh, username. And uh, there's also a link to this, this book, which is uh, open access. A lot of the, the uh, Matt Venner and I wrote this book, Wikipedia and the Representation of Reality, that came out last year uh, in Rutledge, uh, because we, what we wanted to do, and the, the, the problem is this, uh, for Wikipedians, it can be a little academic, but it's written for academics to try to understand the issues how a Wikipedia works, and B, some of the issues that Wikipedia has that we already talk about all the time within the community, but academics have no idea about this, and they just kind of like try to ignore Wikipedia in general. So um, I, I apologize the, the, uh, uh, for that if, if one want, wants to read it, but uh, I, I swear it's written in a way that's supposed to be relatively accessible. What is the format? Do we do? Com uh, do we have a conversation? I can't hear anything from you guys. So if like, there's a, I'll just clap for myself. <laughs> ah, thank you. That's what I do it all for. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for the research and uh, all the efforts that you did in uh, this presentation. It's uh, really interesting to get insights of uh, how Wikipedia connects to education and uh, literacy. Uh, my first question would be, uh, is there a strength of uh, research literature elaborating on how Wikipedia uh, impacted the innovation of uh, new forms of knowledge in education? And the second question would be, uh, is there any evidence that uh, Wikipedia increases uh, uh, the literacy rate in countries where people uh, uh, cannot enroll to uh, educational institutions so easy because of some religious or social uh, reasons? Um, okay, so uh, the first question, so uh, unfortunately the, the room there is a little bit echoey. Um, so I think uh, the second question was about um, how do we kind of engage uh, students who cannot uh, take part in this, in these educational uh, systems, and that, is there any research about that because of um, the, uh, due to uh, the political or religious issues, right? Yeah. Uh, and what was the, can you repeat the, the uh, or rephrase the first one a little bit? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the first one was, uh, is there any evidence, uh, has any research been conducted uh, about how Wikipedia impacts uh, uh, the development of new forms of knowledge? Like, for example, oh. in recent times, uh, uh, 
uh, as uh, times go by, uh, the new gener generations don't have uh, uh, that concentration to focus on reading a text, but they have more time to uh, watch a YouTube video or anything else. So yeah, there's some new forms of knowledge that uh, we need yeah. to uh, care about and uh, introduce in the Wikiverse, in the Wikimedia movement. Yeah, so I think that, I mean, I, I feel like the first question is kind of a two, uh, a two parter, right? Why, uh, how has Wikipedia, how has Wikipedia kind of failed to uh, collect new types of knowledge as well as um, might it be uh, influential? Um, so I, I would say, uh, I think we all know that Wikipedia has some growing to do when it comes to ca uh, capturing uh, different types of knowledge. Uh, that being said, I think we all know that it needs to be, we need to be very careful about that because what we don't want to do is open up the, the floodgates to uh, the Alex Joneses of the world, who you know is now owed a billion dollars, who now owes a billion dollars for uh, um, uh, for stating a lot of uh, nasty things about Sandy Hook uh, victims. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'd be fascinated. No, I know that there was a um, there was a project a long time ago that got killed uh, for trying to capture oral history within Wikipedia. And I think that a lot of people are still interested in seeing that kind of push forward and see what we can do, because I think that one of the issues with Wikipedia is obviously, and then this is this is something that I'm covering with um, with my co-author, uh, uh, and I have been talking about this for a while. Uh, Wikipedia has an enlightenment problem, right? It's very Western. And, uh, and so it prioritizes forms of knowledge which have been um, which are uh, uh, linked directly to, you know, uh, essentially like colonialist kind of ideas. So we have to understand this kind of like imperial form of knowledge uh, is that that like although this is how we built our kind of uh, framework for thinking about whether something is reliable, it also can have drawbacks for those who have been left out of the process. Right. So how do we create more equitable systems for representation of information that wasn't necessarily captured within kind of like, uh, you know, these kind of a, a larger hierarchies of knowledge production that have been influenced by money and power? Uh, so I don't the answer is I don't I don't have that research. I would like somebody to do that research. I think uh, that is also a conversation that needs to have, be had in the community more about how do we include more. Uh, diverse forms of knowledge in a way that can still be verifiable, in a way that can still be reliable. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to. Uh, with this, the, the the phrase is we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? We have this amazing thing that we don't want to now introduce uh, something that breaks the system. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I'm unfortunately the answer to all of your questions. Essentially, like I don't know, but like I, I think these are really great questions. Like, how do we then introduce um, education through Wikipedia uh, and utilize uh, utilize these techniques in ways that we can engage uh, people who cannot uh, um, get to uh, these kind of forms of higher education? And I think, and I think that the the education uh, program, uh, the Wikipedia education program. Uh, is doing a good job, or at least starting to do a good job. I don't know what they're doing exactly today, but um, you know they've been doing a decent job of, of trying to do that. And I think, like you know, uh, Evo right here, he's, he's been doing this in Estonia. Like he works with a uh, he works with higher education. But I know that a lot of people who do this type of work don't work with higher education as well as they work with communities. So this is something that you can do in your community as well, not just in a classroom. The reason why I do it, the reason why I study it in a classroom, because it's so much easier to get the data from a classroom, and uh, it's much more controlled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those questions. Those are really, really good and really important uh, things to be asking. Does anybody else have any questions? I know you have to get to the next speaker. Actually, I would like to ask this uh, point, but I'm not sure how far I should be, is it so I'm uh, actually hearable? But, uh, yeah, you're great, I can hear excellent. you good. Uh, anyway, uh, for this uh, sort of part, I read how this Wikipedia assignments and stuff helped to teach media literacy, but also something that is uh, rather sort of gaining attraction in Europe in general, 
Uh, like for instance, like in Estonia, they're like Caucasian, and also like know that many other countries in Europe are like media literacy week or media literacy month. And I think uh, there are also like some people here who might actually know that, oh yeah, I have also it in my country. And, uh, but do you see how good, for instance, we be the operate with something like that? Even if it's like not directly to schools, but to a very wide audience, uh, what could be the approach? Maybe you have some interesting ideas for all of the people here. Yeah, so I, I, uh, I think that one of the things that I, I'm really fascinated with um, uh, is going on that the, uh, the foundation has started a program where they're teaching people to start programs to do things for uh, a broader generation, a broader kind of population, but specifically like secondary schools. And I think a lot of those techniques can be used in a broader kind of way. I think that um, raising awareness of how people use Wikipedia, um, I think that when you see these types of things in your community, talk to whoever's doing it, right? Uh, because you, you, whether it's a small little panel like this or um, a, a meetup at a, at a, you know, at a small area or some sort of event where you can say, hey, you know, <clears throat> have you ever actually edited Wikipedia, right? And, and then you can actually, like, just getting people to start to go through these things very uh, slowly or even quickly can begin those kind of kernels. Um, I think that they would be really good to do, I do, I think that, uh, for me, uh, when I do, uh, I, I don't, I actually don't think edit-a-thons work very well for creating content. I, this is just me, okay? I think a lot of edit-a-thons, when you invite community members, end up, you, you know, people who are not just community. If it's like a bunch of Wikipedias, we can, we already know how to write. But if you create a community edit-a-thon, instead of thinking about content, what you should think about is this is a space for education, right? This is a space for them to learn these kind of skills and then take them back with them, right? And maybe also uh, have some ideas of places to, to increase uh, representation and diversity of information. But that's a secondary thing. Because let's be honest, you can't learn everything about Wikipedia and write in like three hours. It's just not going to happen. That's, a, that's an impossible thing. So what you end up with is either A, people are confused and you get garbage, or B, um, you end up uh, uh, doing make, you know one of the things. So I think if we prioritize the idea of an editathon as a as a subtle way to teach people, I think that this is a really important way to approach uh, uh, engaging community. But that's just one idea. I think that uh, you know we should all be having more conversation about that. I really this is a really good question, uh, Eva, because like I think I think that this is exactly what we need to be asking about like. If, if we already have programs of like, you know, highlighting, you know, literacy, uh, information literacy or media literacy and things like that, how can they, then we engage with this in a way that's actually productive? Because I think like when we have a week or a month or whatever, then people forget about it. And this should be an ongoing thing. And when people learn how to edit Wikipedia, when people learn how to evaluate it, they don't forget it. They will always look at Wikipedia in a different way. And I think that changes the way that people think about things. How's the weather in Macedonia? Yeah. <laughs> I think we should finish there. <laughs> it's sunny today. Oh, good. It's not sunny today here in, 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 uh, in Thailand, but it will be sunny tomorrow. So, uh, I, I think you have to go to the next presenter, yes? Yeah, uh, thank you, Zachary. Thank you for your time. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's pity that you weren't able to attend the conference, but we hope that uh, this presentation would uh, encourage people to think uh, more creatively regarding uh, the connection between Wikipedia, information literacy, and overall uh, about research and uh, yes. doing research in Wikipedia. Yes, thank you very much, and, and please reach out to me if you have questions. And of course, if you have questions also in education, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people there, and Evo uh, has met me many times now. <laughs> okay. Take care. Have a thank nice you. day. Bye.